So, what I'm doing here today is <clears throat> getting ready for winter, right? Getting ready for the fall, getting ready for winter. And um, what I've already done is I've cleaned the, what we call the fireside combustion side of this boiler, so I'm not gonna do that in this video. I've changed the oil filter on that guy, right? And uh, I have other videos on, on that, on how to clean the boiler, on how to change the oil filter. Um, the thing I'm going to do this year is um, I'm going to change the the uh, nozzle or the burner tip on my boiler. So I haven't done this uh, on this boiler uh, yet. It, uh, boiler I installed, I want to say it was like, geez, it might even be three or four years ago. It's probably been longer than I think. But uh, um, yeah, I had the same exact boiler here. It's a Will McLean WGO3 with a Beckett, uh, I think it's AFG burner, and um, had the same exact thing. Moved into the house, and the previous homeowners were awesome and did not disclose that the boiler was leaking. We didn't find it in the inspection uh, during the first heating season um, when we didn't have a pellet stove. Found all kinds of water down here, and that was awesome. So I had people. Uh, contractors, I should say, not people, but contractors come over the house. What's it going to cost to change this guy out? Oh, no problem. We'll do it for, I think on the low end, they were telling me, I'd have to, this is years ago, but I think it was something like 8000 to like $10,000 or something like that. So um, what did I do? I bought this guy brand new online uh, from, I don't even think it exists anymore, pexsupply.com. And I think it was like 2800 bucks delivered it to my driveway I installed the thing myself and again I haven't uh, to get back on topic here I haven't changed the oil nozzle yet so we're gonna take a look at that and get ready for the winter here so let's take a look at it all right so basically what we want to do here I've already loosened some things but I removed the uh, connector here so that's out of my way um, I also you're gonna see these two screws back here I just loosened those right Put, put those, uh, kind of push them out of the way, and then this door opens, right? So you have like your transformer here, right? These springs um, touch down on the igniters here the, that uh, create the spark in front of the nozzle and light your boiler, right? So there's the fire eye sensing the uh, flame. That's what this guy is, that photo cell there. Um, so the thing is, is I want to get this assembly out of there, right? So how do you do that? Well, on this one, you loosen this. This is the fuel line. You want to make sure you shut off your fuel lines. Loosen that, pull that off. I'm gonna wanna clean this before I put this guy back on. Five eighths. So it's a 45.85. All right, so here we are a couple days later. Received two things in the mail that I was waiting on. Uh, just took a little bit for these things to get here. One is the oil nozzle that we're gonna replace on the, uh, the burner there, right? That you guys saw me taking off. And then the second thing is actually this guy right behind me. We'll take a look at that in a second, what that, what that is and, and uh, <laughs> how it went from just replacing the oil nozzle and uh, cleaning things to this thing. So we'll talk about that in a second. Let's focus on the oil nozzle. Here's my pile of pots from the other day, right? There's my five eighths. What is it, five eighths and I think three quarter yep. size wrench to get the tip off here, the nozzle. You guys will remember, right? Here's the burner assembly, assembly the two electrodes, and, and then the tip 
oil nozzle here that I'm trying to replace, right? So if you guys can see, let me see if I can get this to focus here. If you can see that, there you go. 0.85, right? And then on the other side, it says 45. So what I did was uh, I went to Home Depot, Lowe's, could not find this. Uh, the 0.85 stands for gallons per hour, and, and the 45 degree uh, B is the essentially the uh, the uh, uh, spray pattern, if you will, there, right? So you want to make sure that you get these right. Uh, you can see on the cover here, that's the right one, right? Same exact thing. Um, I could not find this for the life of me at Home Depot, Lowe's, anywhere with this uh, flow rate and this spray angle. And uh, so anyways, I did like any person does these days. I went on to Amazon, bought it. Things showed up at my door, you know, two, three days later. I think this cost me 13 bucks, I think it was. So um, anyways, I'm just going to pop this open. And... Uh, you guys will know that uh, the blue cap does mean something. It actually uh, refers to like, is it a solid cone, a uh, hollow cone, and I think like there's like an atomization one, which is a bunch of fine droplets or something. But um, anyways, the blue does signify something. But again, you can see right 45, and then over here 0.85. Um, where is it? Uh, right there, 0.85. So I'm just gonna put this guy in there. Tighten it down, finger tight, All right? Don't want to cross thread anything. And then basically I'm going to take my two wrenches here, the three quarter and the five eighths, right? Like this, and just so you guys can see it, try not to spill oil everywhere. And then um, just tighten this guy down. Yep, so. So that's that and then basically what you want to do right is you get to put this this back on I'm gonna clean this I don't know if you guys see yeah, you can see that pretty good um, kind of clean out the old soot or carbon here just have my toothbrush that I used this morning <laughs> and uh, clean this up So the fuser here. So basically what we did here guys, you know, cleaned out all the carbon here. These slots are important. They might not look it again if you're a do-it-yourselfer, you know, this might help you if you're an oil burner technician, you know, just cover your ears. <laughs> um, these slots are important. Uh, what they do is they help uh, with combustion. Basically you have air from your blower uh, flowing through the back of this this uh diffuser here and the slots you can see they're kind of at angles they're tangential slots and what they do is it basically swirls the air if you will and helps with the combustion process so if you have carbon jammed up in there and blocking these things then um, that could affect your combustion process so i'm just gonna put this guy back on it just locks it in place so then basically this thing's ready to go back in. So I got that kind of um, that nut back on. Had to use two hands, so it was a little pain in the neck. But um, basically, I want to be pretty careful with this stuff, guys. Um, any these are called flares. If you don't know anything about uh, plumbing or anything like that, uh, you don't want to damage these. Because unless you have a flaring tool and you're good at it, uh, you're going to have problems and leaks and that's going to be a bad day. So um, I'm going to just see. Again, you don't want to cross thread any of these. You know, always go finger tight first and then, you know, and tighten them down from there. So that's like finger tight. And you want to be careful too, guys, on these ferrules um, and, and anything that's like flared or double flared. Uh, if you over tighten them, you can actually split the flare and then again, you're in a bad spot and you're going to want to cry and go to a therapist. So don't do that. All right. So that's back on. That's the fuel line, right? My burner assembly's back in here. Um, close this guy up. All right. Gonna flip these around a little bit. Those are just uh, holding that in place. I'm gonna get my 
Here's my screwdriver. I'm just gonna tighten these guys down. Again, this just holds the, uh, the hold this down. This back in. So basically where we're at right now, guys, is um, everything's buttoned back up, right? I have my new nozzle. Um, uh, the, whole, the whole shebang here, right? Um, arguably, we're ready to go. I'm ready to flip the switch on, fire this thing up, and see how this goes. Um, one thing you want to do every time, uh, or you're going to have to do, it's not whether you want to do it or not, uh, you're going to have to do is anytime you break the fuel lines on these, and introduce some air. I don't care where it is. Um, you're gonna have to prime the the burner, so uh, or prime the fuel line basically. And so um, I'm gonna do that um, after we repair the chimney, and I'm actually ready to run this thing because I have a chimney problem as well. So final step before we light this thing off, I'm gonna have to prime it, and we'll go from there. So let's replace and repair the chimney here. All right. So what I have to do is I, I have to get this thing out of here, right? This this T here. Um, the other side of this is where I was sticking my finger through it. This side is not that bad, but that side is paper thin, so um, it's just a disaster. You can see this thing's RTV together, and, and it's one of the, my biggest pet, pet peeves in, in life is just hacks, right? Um, person that lived at this house before, just a complete hack job, right? He's the guy you just cringe. He's probably 90% of the people out there that go to Home Depot and do this themselves, right? Rather than do it the, the right way, you know, you do this nonsense of the wrong way. You spend 10 times more time, effort, um, screwing everything up and screwing other people than you do doing it the right way. So what I did is this, walk over here. What I did is I very simply went online. I actually bought this thing on eBay. It's a seven inch T, right? <laughs> Pretty easy. It's all pre-made. There's no nonsense BS cutouts and crap, right? I'm gonna rip that stupid thing out. I'm gonna install this thing and um, we'll go from there. Thing I wanna mention to you guys is that, um, well, I'm not gonna walk over there, but there's a barometric damper on these. If you don't know what that is, look that up. But um, anyways, when I installed this boiler, I explained to you guys that I dragged this boiler in this basement myself piped it up, I installed this boiler myself, right? I dragged it through that door over there and that's a whole other story. Um, when I bought the boiler new, um, in the uh, box, if you will, when I bought the boiler, there was a brand new barometric damper, which I've already installed in here, you guys can see. Just very simply, I put it in here and basically tapped it in by hand and it's in there. See that? And you can see the barometric damper, right? The little weight there and everything. Um, so that, that came, that's like, Four years old, probably. Uh, I had it on the shelf over here. Um, I put the new barometric damper in the T. Now I'm going to install the T, get that crap out of here, and do it the right way. So let's do it. This is the chimney. <laughs> Look at that. Just absolutely paper thin. I'm, I mean, I'm barely even touching that, right? So that, that was a big problem. T is removed, right? Showed you how rotted out that was. Um, the thing I found out uh, as I started trying to put the new T back in is that there are two two-foot sections in a 90-degree elbow. Um, one of the two-foot sections is just about rotted as bad as that T was. So uh, what I did, I went out to Ace Hardware, got two 24-inch two-foot sections of 7-inch pipe, just the straight pipe, 
And then I also grabbed this guy here, which is the new 90, which is uh, the only other piece that I would need to replace. So two two foot sections, a 90, and then the T. Uh, I'll have all new chimney here and put this thing behind me, brand new barometric uh, damper and put this thing behind me and move forward and be good to go. So let's put it together. So we're all set, oil nozzle, burner tip, cleaned everything, replaced, right? Chimney, replaced. Um, somehow I lost all my footage here when I installed this thing. Uh, but anyways, I installed the new 90 here that I was telling you guys about. Here's this two foot section, right? That's one of the two foot sections I bought. There's the T, the brand new T I bought. Here's the barometric damper that I told you guys I had on the shelf here. And then here's a two foot section that I had to cut down to, I think it was 19 and a half inches because of the depth of the, the chimney there. So it's all brand new. Uh, basically the, the uh, next steps, um, I had lit off the boiler. It does light off. It, it you know, looks well, runs well. Uh, but the final remaining step that I need to take is I need to uh, get in touch with some folks that have those expensive meters, the combustion analyzers that uh, can uh, tune essentially tune the boiler right make sure I'm running at optimal efficiency I don't have those meters because they they start at like six or seven hundred bucks and they go up to thousands of dollars So I, I just don't have one of those um, and I don't know how much that'll cost me I'm figuring like a hundred bucks or something like that to get somebody out here just to tune it and look at it. So But uh, runs well lights off brand new chimney don't have to worry about that brand new oil uh, nozzle and Good to go for the winter. Thanks for watching guys. Remember to like subscribe and comment